Okay, I've explained how carbon is the limiting factor in plant growth when everything else is perfect. If you have a plant under dry conditions, the plant will not open the stomates that day because it has to close the stomates, close the windows to conserve moisture. Okay, when the stomates are closed, carbon dioxide intake does not happen. On a dry day when the stomates are closed, the plant is not going to grow that day because there's not enough moisture for the stomates to open up so the plant can be in business that day. It needs to wait until it has adequate water. So if I drought stress this plant, it's got to close up shop and basically close the doors to the store that day so that it's not going to be photosynthesizing that day. So it's not going to be growing roots that day. It can't. Additionally, cell elongation needs to happen with open stomate conditions. One thing about the stomate opening is that plants will not open the stomates unless there's light to receive. Okay, so they, they want to have the ability to have light and when they sense that light is there, they will open the stomates, which causes, again, a couple of things. The moisture will run through the plant, up and out through the leaf, and with the open stomates, the, uh, the carbon dioxide will go right back into the leaf. Now, what will happen under really still conditions on a bright day when plants are photosynthesizing a lot is that there will be a lot of oxygen right around the leaf that the plant gives off in the daytime and the plant will have a harder time finding carbon dioxide. It's been shown that with a lot of plant species they grow best at about a four mile an hour breeze because that enables the gas to slowly move, the air slowly move through the plants so that the oxygen is given off so fresh carbon dioxide can come to the leaf and go into the plant. Now where does that carbon go? Well it goes into organic molecules. To a chemist, an organic compound is a carbon compound. And so the carbon will go into things like glucose and sugars and starches and proteins and nucleic acids. All of those things I just mentioned are carbon compounds. And the plant gets the carbon from the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now I said earlier that you were taught that plants give off oxygen and take in carbon dioxide. And I told you that that's only half true. It is half true. At night, the opposite happens. At night, plants close up shop, close the stomates, and they manufacture or put together all of the photosynthates or the chemicals they made that day. During the nighttime, plants take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide, just like you do. So the notion that they do oxygen give off all day is true for the day, but it's not true at night. Now, another thing that plants will do, remember I said that they sense moisture and humidity and temperature and sunlight and where the sunlight is. Another thing that plants do is they manufacture hormones. One of the most important hormones that a plant manufactures is called abscisic acid. Now, when it starts to get a little dry, a plant will sense that it's becoming a little dry. It's having trouble keeping itself hydrated. The roots will generate the hormone called abscisic acid. And what the plant will do is it will make this abscisic acid in the root and it will transport it up near the soil surface, but it will still stay in the roots. That way, if it gets dry enough, the plant can send the abscisic acid up into the foliage. The abscisic acid causes leaves to drop, which is why when you dry a plant out, what you often initially see is a little bit of soft wilt. Think of a plant cell as a water balloon or like a Ziploc bag filled with water. The water balloon itself and the Ziploc bag itself don't really have any structure to them. It's the water within the water balloon or the water within the Ziploc bag that causes them to have structure and firmness. When you start to take that moisture away, everything collapses, which is why plants wilt. Those uh, cells or little plastic bags in the leaf suddenly sort of shrink and they run out of water and then the plant will soft wilt. Generally, shortly thereafter, the plant will drop leaves. Plants have what's called a moisture economy. Think of a sink with some water running into the sink and then some water draining out, okay? That's the moisture economy. When the water coming in is equal to the water going out of the sink, the level stays the same. But when you have more water going out of the sink than coming in, that's creating a moisture deficit in the sink. And that's what causes plants to sense that, hey, I'm running out of water. Therefore, the roots will make abscisic acid, but only when they need it, they will send it up to the leaves to drop leaves. It's the simplest thing in the world, but moisture goes in through the roots, up through the stems, and out through the leaves. That's, that's called transpiration. 
We spoke a moment ago about the opening and closing of stomates in, in the leaves by plants in relation to light. If we take a plant that's in the dark and suddenly shine light on it, the plant will, in between 6 and 18 minutes, know that light is being shined upon it and it will open the stomates and begin to photosynthesize. It is a really a pretty quick reaction. Many plants like filtered light where the light is sort of going back and forth on the leaves very much like you get underneath trees. What that enables the leaves to do is to reflect different levels within them and also when you have filtered shade the leaf surface is a little cooler. Remember that maintaining moisture and turgidity in the leaf and just being able to be properly hydrated is really job number one for plants. That's the most important thing in their life. Because ultimately what a plant wants to do, a plant ultimately wants to grow enough so that it can flower and seed and reproduce. <music>